Margate is Britain's original seaside resort and in its heyday one of the most popular. But, like many holiday destinations, Margate lost its appeal, probably due to the allure of cheap European holidays. Despite being a struggling area, the local community is trying its hardest to restore Margate's former glory and turn it back into a place worthy of their memories. When I grew up, I'm not going to say which year, it was very, very busy, very, very busy, and very glamorous, and it was very upmarket in Cliftonville. We used to have MPs staying in my grandparents' hotel, which shows how nice it was. Margate was very different to Westgate. Um, uh, it was louder, it was brasher, it had all that neon, all those lights, there was loads of noise. Um, you know, there was, there was all, the, all the arcade machines along the front, there was the noise of the beach because the beach was full, and then the backdrop to that, there was all the screaming <laughs> coming from Dreamland, you know, there was the noise of the scenic going around. I remember Margate as being noisy and bright and uh, a little bit frightening when I was very small. Dreamland definitely played a big part in um, my growing up. I remember going there a lot when I was younger because it was free to go in, we could just walk through. I think that was really nice for families not to have to sort of find money to just walk through and look at all the rides and enjoy it. Um, the beach, I think we're just so lucky with our beach. Um, the lovely golden sands, so I definitely remember being sort of buckets and spades and we've got photographs of my sister with um, the monkeys. They used to do monkeys with photographs on the seafront, so I remember that. When we moved to Margate in 1972, um, Margate was, in Cliftonville, were, were, they, it was still a thriving area full of life and choices for visitors. I mean, Cliftonville had, had probably no exaggeration to say hundreds of options for places to stay. It had large hotels, the Butlins Hotel, the, the uh, Highcliffe Hall, which was, um, there were many nightclubs, there were probably six nightclubs just in Cliftonville. Um, on the beach there was a boardwalk which went from Walpole Bay practically all the way along towards the Winter Gardens. There were cafes on the beach which were open fully six months of the year. My memories would be things like absolutely begging my mum to let me go down to Dreamland on a Friday night with my friends and I'd be sort of 13 years old and completely not allowed um, but just it being the only place I wanted to go and all the young kids were hanging out there and um, I used to go to a drama school up the road, the Thanet Stage School of Dance and Drama and do all my little drama classes there and um, we used to uh, finish and just wander around the town for hours and I think that's probably quite important as well because um, the town is used so much by young people who don't have much else to do. Yeah. If there's not much extracurricular activities, it's important that there's something visually interesting for them to see or spend time around. It will influence who you are. We were sort of trailing around the shops and getting a McDonald's and things like that. So, yeah, I actually spent a lot of time in the town. Margate is a town which is constantly changing. The people of Margate are positive and passionate about their town. Well, as we speak, I think there's lots and lots of things to be really positive. Um, and uh, I'm very pleased to see some of the developments that are going on in Margate, particularly some of the business people that have, have decided to open up shops in Margate or cafes in Margate, Cupcake, for example, here, Mullins, and then various um, um, shops, specialised retail shops, really, um, in Margate. That is a very good sign, and the reason that those people feel confident enough to do that in Margate is because of developments like Turner Contemporary. I love, what I like about Margate is I love the sea, I love the beach, because I like swimming and I like sunbathing, and uh, I love the harbour, and the, I just love looking at the sea. Because my, I've got a little house right opposite the sea. People say, "Do you ever look at the sea?" And I said, "Every morning, my sh I shave by the window, overlooking the sea. So for ten minutes, I'm shaving, looking at the sea, which is wonderful." 
I think it's, I really love it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real sort of ambassador for Margate in that I go around telling everyone how wonderful it is. Um, I think that there's still a lot of regeneration to happen because um, looking out the window you see some great little pop-up shops opening and there's um, great uh, redevelopments of buildings going on, revitalise, um, revitalising the town. Margate today is kind of sad and hopeful, I guess. Um, it's a different place to, to what it was when I came here ten years ago, when it was really just sad. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of hope kicking about. Um, uh, it, I think it suffered a great deal from a lack of vision, a lack of planning. I think it's been neglected for very, very many years. And I think it's a town standing on the edge of something that could be really great. There are several developments happening in Margate right now, such as the renewal of Dreamland and the opening of the Turner Contemporary. Well, I've long had a fascination for the heritage of, of fairs and, uh, and amusement parks, and I've undertaken a number of projects in the heritage field. Um, and I was invited by the trustees of Dreamland Margate to continue and contribute to the effort that they've been making, very considerable effort, to reopen Margate, uh, reopen Dreamland Margate after many years of difficulties. The very special qualities of Dreamland, uh, it's, it, it, it's not a, a, a particular ride or you know, a, a particular physical feature of the site. You know, it's, it's really conjured up in the name and, and, and that edgy kind of rock and roll experience that people have enjoyed at Dreamland over, over the decades from, from the 1920s when it took the name Dreamland. And what we want to do more than anything uh, in the refurbishment is to bring back special features like the roller coaster, the scenic railway which is, which is behind us, but also put that rock and roll and put that edge you know, back into Margate and back into the Dreamland experience and, and create a destination that people can't resist but come to. And we're hoping that we can open um, towards the end of 2012, uh, but uh, an end stop date would be the beginning of 2013. So there's not long to wait. It feels a really exciting moment, the fact that we can now be really open about the date we're working to. We've got a definite deadline and as a team we're very excited about prospect of the gallery open, but I think it's also a really key moment for the town and for the whole of East Kent. The opening of Turner Contemporary has been long awaited, but I think it's going to be a fantastic, spectacular weekend of events and activities for everybody. With the changes and developments that are happening in Margate, the local community is hopeful of a bright future. I just hoping it will it could go back to when you've got Dreamland, when you've got the, uh, the cinemas, mm -hmm. uh, the beach there. Is, it's a wonderful beach, you've got the, one of the best beaches there is around. Um, I hope that Margate continues on the up. Um, I hope that the regeneration continues and builds on its promise to sort of uh, revitalise the town. Um, most importantly, I think, I hope that people um, have a bit more faith in the place and, and because I think some of the residents are very proud and are really fighting to make this a, a wonderful, unique and sort of different place to visit or live. Um, but then a lot of people, perhaps because of the past 20 years, feel like there's not much point in, in giving any more love to the place. And so I hope, um, yeah, I hope it continues in, on the path it's on at the moment. It should be really good. My hopes are for Margate are I wish they would rebuild the pier. I'd love to see the pier because I, I remember the pier very well as a child. I was allowed to take, go on the pier sometimes. Um, so I do love the pier and we used to go on boat trips from Margate to South End, uh, which was wonderful. Well, I want to see, I want to see Margate uh, vibrant. I want to see everybody very proud of Margate. Um, I want to see the economy in Margate flourishing. I want to see less empty shops in Margate. Uh, I want to see thriving restaurants. And we've all got a part to play in that. Um, you know, uh, we at the Dreamland team, um, together with the council and the landowners here, are doing as much as we can to push this dimension of the project. Um, other people working on the Turner Contemporary, 
you know, they've put a lot of effort in over many years and, and that's opening next year. But it's down to every resident, it's down to everybody who is interested and everybody who you know, is associated with Margate you know, to, to make their contribution. I know Margate has some problems, but we've got to talk it up, we've got to work our way through those problems and drive it forward into the future. And together we can do that. You know, human, the power of human uh, endeavour is, 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 is immense.